Hi everyone. Um, <coughs> so I'll talk about a bit about multi and bandits, and just mostly for my own interest. Have, is it something that you've come across in your own sort of work? Can you raise your cat. You don't raise your hand. Okay, it's a few people. Um, so there, there's sort of many different ways you can think about multi and bandits. Um, I want to introduce it more of a almost like an uh, extension to traditional A/B testing. Um, so yeah. So without further ado, let's. Uh, let's talk about what the what a multi-arm bandit is. So it's essentially a decision problem where you as a deci decision maker are presented with a number of discrete choices to make. So A, B, C, whatever, uh, a known number. Um, and you have uh, a number of trials which is typically unknown and usually infinite. And at each trial you pick an action, uh, pick one of the discrete choices that you're presented with and having picked an action, you get a reward. And a reward, a reward comes from some reward distribution that's specific to the action that you chose. So, so now the, the problem is that you want to use this information uh, as the time goes by, and you make more choices and receive more rewards to maximize your total expected reward. Um, so in order to do that, you need, to, you need some sort of performance measure. Uh, the simplest thing you can do is you keep observing the rewards that you receive uh, on the choices that you make and you keep track of the uh, sample average over time and now you can use the sample average as a performance metric of the arm at each particular point in time. Uh, so now you can use this and come up with some sort of policies or strategies how to maximize your reward. Uh, the simplest thing you can do is always pick the choice that currently has the biggest reward, biggest sample average. Uh, now you can probably see that this might not be ideal because the rewards come from a distribution which is stochastic. So you might get lucky and get a big reward from a distribution that actually has uh, a low expected value. But if, if you get lucky in, on the first one, you'll always stick with the choice that's suboptimal. So, so, so there's, there's actually quite a bit of research about this. Um, there is uh, an exact solution uh, to this problem, which is uh, called Gittin's indices, uh, but it, it only really it is implementable in, in some certain choices for the reward distribution. Um, and in my research on, on these multi bandit problems, I came across this quote that I, uh, I want to share with you. Um, so, so the problem is a classic one. It was formulated during the war and efforts to solve with so sapped the energies and minds of allied analysts that the suggestion was made that the problem be dropped over Germany as the ultimate instrument of intellectual sabotage. Uh, so you can imagine how I feel. Um, okay, so, so even though there, are, there, there is an exact method, it's, it's unwieldy and you can't usually apply it if you have, a, if you have a, an arbitrary reward distribution. So, so there's a whole host of approximate solution methods things that you can actually code up uh, quite easily and things that work well in practice. Um, so, so, so I've listed a few of these. So you can think about A-B testing as one of the simpler ones. So in this case, um, you have a few choices and then you run an experiment for a fixed number of time, uh, time periods where you just gather evidence and you choose your actions randomly and then at some point you say okay I've gather, gathered enough evidence given my evidence I think this particular choice is the best so I'll go with that forever after. Now this is a bit uh, it can be a bit tricky because even though you've gathered evidence and you say you have you're 95 percent confident that you know which one's the best one you can still choose the worst one but then you're stuck. Um, so other choices are there's epsilon greedy, which is a very simple idea. You always take the best, currently best performing uh, candidate apart from a small, <coughs> small proportion of time. Epsilon you choose randomly, so that allows you to explore choices that might not be optimal, but uh, you don't know yet. Um, so slightly more sophisticated ones. Um, so the ideas are a bit more sophisticated. But actually, if you code these up, they're all very easy. Um, upper confidence bound, um, sometimes called also uh, optimism in the uh, face of uncertainty, basically says that you're, you're more likely to uh, explore options uh, which you haven't explored as much, just to gain more information. 
Uh, my favorite one is Thompson sampling because it's Bayesian. So the idea is that you start with a, with a prior distribution over the mean of the rewards of the choices, and then after each trial, you update your uh, update update your beliefs. You get a posterior distribution, then you draw samples from the posteriors and make your choices accordingly. And it works very well in practice. Um, so just to say that I'm not just making this up, uh, I ran a quick experiment. Um, so a very simple scenario, you have two, two choices, A and B, both have binary rewards, uh, so zeros and ones, and both from, we're coming from the Bernoulli distribution, uh, one with a parameter 0.5, one with a 0.6. So you can think of this um, if, if your problem is something to do with serving websites to a customer. It might be a conversion rate, say 50% of A, and B might be something that you don't know with the conversion rate off, uh, but you want to experiment whether it's better or not. Uh, so you can measure something like the average cumulative reward for each of the strategies that we discuss. So if you do A-B testing, then typically you run an experiment for some number of time. So I, I've set this to 2,000, and you sort of you just get the mean of the two distributions. And then after that time, you declare, OK, I, I think I know what the winner is. And then you go for that, with that one forever after. And uh, in this case, I, I picked the right one. Uh, no, that's not necessarily the case. Um, but with, you can see with all the other methods that I, uh, that I mentioned, you, you converge to the best performing choice a lot quicker, uh, which is a big win. Uh, there's various extensions to these. So you can, you can handle non-stationary rewards. So, so remember that we sort of assume that the rewards come from a fixed but unknown reward distribution. But in the real world, your rewards might be changing constantly. So you can, you can adapt these to, to handle that. Uh, a very interesting case is the contextual bandits. So um, again, going back to the sort of website serving example, you might not want to serve the same sort of website to every customer or, or visitor. You might want to use additional information about the visitor. Um, so you would have a context. So you could incorporate that in your sort of uh, bandit choice choices, so that's that's sort of a light version of reinforcement learning. Yeah. Um, so that's that's mostly what I want to say. Uh, so, any questions? How do you establish the context uh, for the contextual bandits? Well, it will depend on the problem. So. Um, so as I mentioned, if, if your problem is optimizing which version of a website uh, results in most customer conversions, then your context would be the customers that actually visit you. So the context might be the, any kind of uh, metrics related to the visitors of your site. So you might have, you, you will have different contexts for different parts of your visitor base. Um, so the way we actually use bandits at Selden we, we want to route traffic between several machine learning models that are deployed in parallel. Uh, and we might use con context as the actual features that are coming in. Um, so we might use the data, the features, as a context, and maybe using context contextual bandit to choose which model is best to uh, route the, the data request to and get a prediction back. Mm -hmm.